Hello and welcome, my name is Matej Jan, but you can call me Retro, and this is the Retro Nader First Person Review. Today we are reviewing a game called Story Mode on the Kano Computer Kit. Well, we will be reviewing it as soon as I get this box open. Where were we? Ah yes, the Kano Computer Kit. A couple of months ago Kano Computing sent me their Computer Kit bundle as part of an art collaboration that I'm doing with them. And the bundle includes their Computer Kit and the Screen Kit, $150 each or $15 off for the bundle together. They're called kits because instead of buying an off-the-shelf computer, you buy a kit that you assemble yourself. With all the pieces out of the box, you follow Lego-like instructions to build your own computer. It's not exactly a masterpiece with a hundred of pieces, like the chips and resistors are all in place already. In fact, the heart of the computer is just a standard Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. Kano adds on an SD card, a casing, a speaker, and here you can see plugging in the power to the correct pins is just as dangerous as it gets. The screen kit follows a similar pattern. The instruction booklet again includes random tidbits of computer history and basic explanations of how the system works. They even give you a magnifying glass to explore the driver board. Okay, maybe don't expect exactly that kind of magnification level. Soon enough you end up with a computer you built yourself, and when I say you, I really mean your kids, because this is a computer you're buying for them, not yourself. The brain, as Kano calls the computer part, clips on the back of the screen for a nice compact experience. Of course you could have gone with any other HDMI display as well, but the screen kit does match the Bluetooth keyboard perfectly. With all the pieces in place, you are ready to turn the Kano on. After a brief encounter with a neat S key homage to the Matrix, you're welcomed into the world that lives inside your computer. So it's not exactly as dramatic as The Matrix, in fact here is how the music really sounds like. So this is story mode. It looks a little bit like Zelda, except instead of fighting monsters you learn about computers and type in programs. Story mode follows the mysterious white rabbit through a RPG-esque top-down world where you encounter many different characters and environments. We start on the side of the canal where the memory card is plugged in, promptly named the SD Beach. We then travel to the power port, where you can learn about the charging cable, the python jungle, where you will run the game of snake using console. Let me demonstrate, after going through their tutorials and using the help command, you can learn that you can do dash dash team 80s to run the game in a mode that looks like old DOS games. And there's also the vector village, which is all about making art. In this mode you are learning how to draw with code, for example here we're gonna create a stickman figure, mostly you're just typing in the commands that are highlighted in the instructions. This is very reminiscent of how our generation in the 80s learned to code when we typed in programs from books and magazines. Later on you get quizzed to see if you understand the subtle differences between commands and when you're finished you can share your work online and then move on to making your own creations. Learning about the console and drawing with CoffeeScript are just two examples of educational things you will find in story mode. In the time between you will explore the world in the search of knowledge bits that get stored into your codex, many quests will have you run around from one part of the island to the other, and on your way you will bump into even more coding and computer use challenges. Deep inside the block mines you will find a brilliant way to pull your kids into coding, it's called Hack Minecraft. Unlike Make Art, which has been the most popular of Kano's tools so far, with over 100,000 drawing scripts shared online, Hack Minecraft doesn't require writing code directly, but instead uses a drag and drop interface. If your kids have ever done Scratch, they will feel right at home, but if they haven't, no worries because this is the best way for them to learn from zero. 
So in this example we are creating our shelter and we already have a block that will create a hollow cube of size 6. Now we are adding a block that will create the door and what we need to set up is that the door should appear two blocks ahead of us so that it will appear right in the wall. What's brilliant about Hack Minecraft is that the game is always running on the left side of the screen and then you hit tab, you simply switch into the game and you can test your power out with the press of a button. So here I am inside my shelter that just popped up, I can go outside to take a look and you can see how I've created a house for myself using just two blocks of code. Story Mode's world is merely half finished with many areas that are planned to open in the future. Looking at the map reminds me of the excitement I get when visiting amusement parks, except the roller coasters here teach you about computers. One more example that is already available today is a game called Terminal Quest, where you navigate the world using terminal commands. So for example, to look around you type in the ls command, which will list the files, and then you can look at things using cat, which lists the contents of a file, in this case giving you a nice ASCII illustration. And then you have to do things like move with MV and so on. Outside of the game, Kano offers other educational and creative environments, as well as other typical computer tools. And yes, Transport Tycoon Deluxe is pre-installed on the Kano. Retronator Tips and Tricks To make the best railroads, use two-track design. First create a cross so that trains can switch to any of the lanes and then place down signals for the trains to go into the correct direction. Also place a depot where your trains will come out and your station is ready. Choo-choo! This is the Kano Computer Kit in a nutshell. It reminds me of my experience growing up with computers of the 80s where you had to start writing code as soon as you turned them on. Granted, when we were growing up, boredom alone could make us learn how to code. Kano has a harder job in a world where we have thousands of games and TV shows available at the touch of our fingers. But with some parental guidance, I'm sure you can set your kids on their way to love computer science. Like Neo says in The Matrix, I don't know the future. I didn't come here to tell you how this is going to end. I came here to tell you how it's going to begin. After Kano's initial Kickstarter in 2013, the company launched another campaign one year ago for three new peripherals, Pixel Kit, Camera and Speaker. The Pixel Kit is the reason Kano contacted me in the first place. It continues the narrative of Computer Kit and brings the story from behind the screens into the real world. But you will have to wait for that for the next Retronator First Person Review. I hope you have enjoyed the first first person retronator review if you want to be notified when the second part comes out subscribe down below and you will also get more videos about pixel art and learning with video games.